Hi guys and welcome to another Elementor video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Well today we're going to show you how to create a sort of frosted glass background to your elements. We've got here a sort of frosted glass thing. Not only does it sort of make it opaque but it also blurs it out a bit, a bit like a frosted glass. If I lift this you can see the image underneath is totally clear really easy to do we've got to do a slight bit of CSS code for this but don't let that put you off any code I write I'll put down below it's only two lines you're welcome to use it and apply it as you need to so let's get started I've got this page open with Elementor here so let's go ahead and delete this whole section okay I'm gonna create a new section hit the little plus sign on the blue tab up there for a section in this section I'm going to use a couple of widgets I'm going to use and these are all available in the free one I'm going to use an icon box and under that I'm going to put a button like I say these are all available in the free version and of course you can do it with the pro version as well and if you don't have Elementor you can download it from my link below the video here okay great well we've got our little modules in there let's do our section first I'm going to go into the section simply click on the section or you can right click and edit the section that way I want to go to style I want to go to background background type I'm going to hit the little paintbrush icon there just to add an image to the background choose whatever image works for you there it is position wise I think I'm gonna have it center center I'm gonna have it fixed so when we scroll the page it's gonna stay where it is up and down like that I don't want it to repeat but I do want it to cover the actual section itself so size wise I'm gonna go down to cover right there there we go fantastic so we've got our little image in the background there while we're in the section let's give it a little more padding top and bottom just to make the section a bit bigger so I roll up to the top I'm going to go to advanced I'm going to uncheck the little chain there because I just want to do the top and bottom and let's maybe put 150 top and similar for the bottom so we've got a decent size sort of hero section there there we go see plenty of that burger now okay let's go in and we'll style our little modules here and we're going to keep this fairly simple for our icon module I'm going to find something a little more appropriate you can scroll through or just type something in the search there utensils fantastic and if there is something it'll pop up for you there's our little knife and fork there whatever you want your title to be and I'll leave that dummy text just as it is because I haven't got anything really to say about this if you wanted to link this module somewhere you could do so right here I'm gonna leave that as it is we're gonna use a call to action button for any link you want to do there let's go into our style now and for the icon I'm just gonna make it white top left hand corner there or FFF down the bottom. I want to make it a little bit bigger, I think. Something like that. If you wanted to, you could tilt it, rotate it, have it offset. I think mine's okay like that. And for the content, title wise, I'm going to make that white as well. Again, top left hand side. I'm going to go into typography and just change that font. Element has got lots of fonts to choose from so you're not going to get stuck in a hurry I'm going to use slab I'm going to make it bold I'm going to make it uppercase I don't think I'll need to change the style default styles absolutely fine and I'm going to make it a bit bigger something like that there we go fantastic 
and we can close that one up and for the actual description itself all I'm going to do is make that white in color fantastic so that's that one taken care of let's now go into the button just going to click on the button you can right click and edit button or hit the little module there or just click on the button module itself and as you can see we're in there okay going to keep this fairly simple all I'm going to do is align that to the middle if you want to you can make it full width but that's a little overkill for me for this today so I'm just going to make mine in the middle like that I am going to make it a bit larger and the only other thing I'm going to change the background on hover so I'm going to go to the style okay here's the button here's the background type there's the color we got already I'm going to copy that I'm going to go to the hover and I'm going to put this color in there I'm just going to simply paste it in there same color but I'm going to take the opacity down opacity is sort of transparency or see-throughness that way it's going to kind of do that when we hover over it there we go fantastic okay well now let's create our frosted glass effect on the actual row itself the column that's within the row so I'm going to go into the column as you can see we're in the column now I'm going to go to style background type I'm going to put in a white background initially as you can see and as I pull the opacity down you'll see it sort of get transparent and see through white you can use any color for this if you want sort of different color glass effects I'm going to take this down well, probably to about 25% now that's okay it's just made it kind of see-through which is a nice little effect on its own and it looks a little frosty there but we're going to enhance this effect by adding a bit of code which will blur out anything behind there make it more look more frosty but before I do that I want to add a bit of padding all around to our little column here so we're in the column still I'm going to go to advanced padding I'm going to give it 50 pixels all around there we go gave it a little bit of space and if we go back to style I'm going to give it some rounded corners so if we go down to border I'm going to give it 20 all round just to give it rounded corners there right there okay well let's add our code and to do this today if you're using the pro version of Elementor you can write the code down here advanced tab custom CSS if you're using the free version you'll have to write it in your theme customizer to get to the theme customizer go to your dashboard down to appearance customize once you get to the customizer at the bottom you'll find an additional CSS panel so if I shift this down and we'll put a title in there always a great idea to put titles in when you're writing CSS if you write a lot of CSS it makes things so much easier to find it's also a courtesy if anybody edits the site after you it makes things a lot easier for them as well so we'll say frosted background okay well I'm gonna leave that just like it is I'm actually gonna write mine in the custom CSS here so we can see what's going on for convenience but I'll show you exactly what to do if you're using the free version if you're using the free version you'll see this box but it'll say get the pro version before you want to use it okay so before we can write the CSS for this we've got to give it a CSS class which is a name that you give to things so you can actually target them still on the advanced tab on the advanced drop down up here just under the padding and Z index you'll see CSR ID and CSS classes we're going to use a class today and call it frosted call it whatever you want to call yours it's usually a good idea to call it something that you're going to recognize and it's got to be unique obviously so we've now given this a name this panel a name or this column a name because we're editing the column called frosted so we can target it so I'm going to go down to the custom CSS we've given it a class name all class names have to have a dot or a period in front of it. let's go up in here and it's period class name frosted 
Then we'll open and close some curly brackets and in between is where we can actually write the code that we want. So if I just separate those quickly, we're going to use backdrop filter and it may throw up a flag saying we don't know what that is, but it does actually work. So we can say backdrop dash filter colon and we want it to blur. So we can say blur, open some round brackets and inside the amount that you want it to blur by. So I'm going to say, let's try eight picks. I think that's what I used before. And as you can see, that's blurred that out. Still nice and clean the picture behind it, but it's kind of blurred it out, which makes it much more frosty looking. And of course, put a lesser value in if you want to blur it less, say five picks. Still blurred, but just not quite as much. Or put more in if you want more. And that's extremely blur blurred right there. So adjust your amount of blurriness by higher value, more blurred, lower value, less blurred. I'm going to put this on six. I apologize for any noise in the background to taste the thunderstorm going out on outside. OK, so I'm going to copy that. And to make sure that it's compatible with more browsers, we're going to use the web WebKit. So I'm going to put a semicolon there. Always put a semicolon after your line of code if you're going to write another line. If you fail to do that, it won't read the next line. So we're going to say WebKit dash WebKit dash and exactly the same line of code right there. That'll make it more compatible with other browsers. OK. And we'll update that. And let's get rid of the page that I've got there already. And we'll preview what we've got here. A little eyeball to preview changes. And there it is. There's our frosted background. Like I say, you can have it more frosted or more blurred with a higher pixel value. And you can change colors to have sort of different color backgrounds like that. So there it is, guys. There's how to create a frosted background effect using the Elementor. What I'll do is I'll quickly show you. We wrote this, as I say, in the pro version using custom CSS here. If you're using the free version, do exactly the same thing in your th theme customizer. But just put your code in here as well, and that'll work perfectly. What you could do for convenience so you can see what's going on if you need to is you can go to your home page and set the page that you're working on uh, temporarily as the home page so you can see it in the customizer with the free version if you need to. But if not, that's fine. Just put it in the theme customizer right there, publish, and you're good to go. I'm going to delete this because I don't need it in two places. But if you've got the free version, that's where you want to put it in your customizer there. OK. So there you go, guys. There's how to create a frosted background effect. A little bit of CSS, but really easy to do with a fantastic Elementor page builder. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.